Hey, this is John Hansbrough. I want to do a quick uh, comparison here for you between FSAs, flexible spending accounts, and HSAs, health spending accounts. Those sound like really similar things, and in a lot of ways, they are pretty similar. They get used on a lot of the same expenses. You have a debit card. There's a variety of things that make them very comparable. But there are some key differences that you need to know about if you're going to be using one of these plans so that you don't have buyer's remorse, you don't have a surprise at the end of the year. There's some key differences. So let's dive into the pros and the cons of both HSAs and FSAs. So the first one that we'll start with is a HSA. That's a health savings account. In order to contribute towards a health savings account, you have to be enrolled in an eligible health plan. What's an eligible health plan? It's a high deductible health plan. These are health plans that have uh, certainly high deductibles. Uh, those might be 1,500 individual, 3,000 family, and then up from there. But a key distinctive feature of them is not just the deductible, but the fact that there are no co-pays in the plan. Instead, as a plan member, you are responsible for nearly 100% of plan costs before you hit the deductible. Other plans, they might have a higher deductible like an HSA or a high deductible health plan, but they have co-pays for maybe the first few visits to go see your PCP. That's not the case when you're enrolled in a high deductible health plan. So you gotta be ready that if you do go consume healthcare services, you're paying cash pay rates, you're paying very high rates upfront as soon as you go see a physician. The point then of having that structure is it's a bit of a gamble. You're saying, I know that I'm gonna have to pay 100% of costs if I go see the doctor, if I go to the uh, you know emergency room, if I have to get some imaging done, whatever it is. For that trade-off, I get to contribute money on a pre-tax basis into a savings account. And over time, I can invest that savings account and have that growth be tax deferred, potentially tax free long term. And if I use that money over time during my lifetime, I can use it on healthcare expenses and not pay taxes on the money that comes out of the account. So it's a rare vehicle in the financial and healthcare space that is tax deductible on the way in, it has tax free growth, and then the money that comes out is considered tax free. Remember, that's only if you use it on eligible medical expenses, and that's similar for FSAs too. FSAs have the same thing. They're treated in a very similar way. You use the money on eligible medical expenses, you don't pay taxes. But here's the key difference between FSAs and HSAs. HSAs is a checking account. It's a savings account. It's money that you own. It's your asset, and you hold on to it long term. Even if in the future you're not enrolled in a high deductible health plan, you can't make contributions towards the account any longer, but you can still hold the account and you can still use it to pay for healthcare expenses. I personally am using an HSA right now. I don't go see the doctor very often. If I do, I'm comfortable just paying 150 bucks to go see the physician. In trade off for that, I am stuffing money into my HSA account. That money at this point now, I am investing a portion of it and we'll see what happens in the long term. It's been bad recently. But the goal there is that that money grows long term. My thinking, this is potentially a baby fund, something that I'm going to use on my kids long term down the road. Right now, though, I don't have kids. I'll just sock the money away. In trade off for that, my, H, uh, my high deductible health plan has slightly lower premiums. So I get a little arbitrage there. Now, when it comes to FSA accounts, flexible spending accounts, those are a little bit more of a use it or lose it. There's a nature to them that if you have to use the money on healthcare expenses in a given year, or the money goes away at the end of the year. So it's a strange thing. When you go through open enrollment, you're going to set some deduction for the coming plan year. You are going to say, put $50 into it per paycheck. That money then is going to be able to be used by you for healthcare expenses. Now, what's the point of segregating money aside for this? Well, the money that goes in the FSA is tax deductible. So similar to an HSA, the money that goes in is tax deductible. But here's the thing, because FSAs have to be used in the plan year, we usually recommend that people undershoot their contributions a bit towards an FSA because we have seen situations, people contribute to an FSA and their healthcare services, their healthcare needs just don't show up during the plan year. So all of a sudden at the end of the year, they've got 500, they've got $1,000 maybe in this FSA account, they gotta use it. Now you can roll over up to $500 per year, but above and beyond that, the money just vanishes, it goes away, it goes back into the company's coffers. So it's really imperative if you are gonna enroll in an FSA and you're going to make an election to contribute to it over the course of a plan year, you really wanna know that you're gonna use that money. Of course, a caveat is within healthcare, we don't always know when we are and are not gonna have healthcare spending. We don't always know when we're gonna to have to go see the doctor, potentially go to the ER. It's the nature of how healthcare works. That being said, FSAs can be a helpful way for you to find uh, additional tax deductible ways of contributing towards your healthcare. So you maybe were enrolled in a PPO plan, but you know that you're gonna go see the doctor this year, you wanna use that money for co-pays or what have you. 
And you know that you might end up having, maybe with a family, $1,500 in a minimum of healthcare expenses for the year. If you're making, say, $60,000 a year, you've got to pay taxes on, say, $2,000 to $2,500 of gross income for you to be left with $1,500 to pay those healthcare expenses. With an FSA account, though, that's not the case. You just need to put $1,500 pre-tax into this account. You can use it on those healthcare expenses. So it's a little bit of a tax savings. There's additional differences between these two accounts, but I thought this was a quick primer on the high level differences between them. If you'd like to know more, reach out, check out other videos on the channel, comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.